Hey, have you ever heard Mind Your Own Business? How about this? Mind Your Own Taiji Solo Form Business. I get asked about the mind in Taiji, or uh, meditation in Taiji, or what you'll be thinking of, or what should you be focusing on. Uh, I'd like to share with you uh, my story and some of the things that I do and uh, some of the things I've learned. Uh, before I do that, please subscribe to my YouTube page if you haven't already. Uh, like this video, um, you know, share. All those things. Please leave a comment. Uh, if it's a personal comment, uh, you know, you can always email me or text me or uh, my contact info will be out there. So, the mind in Taiji. There was a point after about five years of continuous group and private classes with my main teacher, Master Titi Liang. Um, with lots of corrections, lots of um, work, lots of theory. At one point he said to me, okay, your solo form is basically correct. You've got the stances correct. You know how many pieces are in each movement and the directions and the measurements and, and all these things. And he said, but still, it's not finished because I don't know what's going on in your mind. And so we can get the outside, the, the Taiji movements correct. Um, that is part of it. Then the other part is we've got to get uh, something going on in the mind. So that began my study of what you know I like to think of as uh, mindfulness or meditation in the solo form. For beginners, the easiest thing to have in your mind is the sequence or the movements, and um, I found this to be true many times. Even if I uh, work on some other meditation technique. If, the, if you're working on the sequence, that is your meditation. And that's actually really easy. And it's easy to see if you uh, get off, if your mind has been wandering or scattered or worried, because then you, you mess up the sequence. You either lose your balance, you forget where you are, you go into a wrong section. Um, you know, you may or may not have had that experience. Once the body's on automatic pilot, I mean, if you practice on a regular basis and you're comfortable with your movements, you can start the solo form, uh, start, middle, and end, you can go and you can have the most intricate daydreams have nothing to do with the solo form. Um, so what we want to do is we want to uh, find some meditation and uh, some inner technique to keep the mind and body in the same place and same time. Um, for beginners, again, sequence. Um, another one is breathing. Uh, some teachers will teach that right away. They'll teach a coordinated breath pattern with movement. Uh, for Master Liang, um, we, he had counts with every posture, and at some point he would add breath to the counts. And he did give us a couple of different ways to do the breath um, with the counts. Um, and by no means, there are so many different ways to breathe with the solo form. Uh, a really good one is to forget it. Um, but that is something to work on. You can make sure that you're not holding your breath or make sure that you're be breathing uh, with your belly or your dantian. The founder of, of Yang style, Taiji Yang Luchan, uh, his main meditation was keeping the mind and uh, down on the dantian, making sure that the lower abdomen expanded and contracted as he was breathing while he was doing the solo form. And this, uh, this helps with the stimulation of the chi. It helps with lots of things. It helps to coordinate the the waist and the and the body and I mean that sounds really easy okay I'm just gonna do this whole uh, solo form sequence with my mind on the the Dantian but very quickly at least for me sometimes the mind wants to go someplace else myself and my classmates we take a little smear of Tiger Balm or uh, at my parents house I'd use a Vicks VapoRub and I put a little bit on my Dantian and then doing the form and there'd be an awareness down there but again sooner or later once the mind gets uh, used to something uh, I'd be doing the form and the last thing I'd be thinking about is that little burning under my my Dantian. Um, one that I used to do a lot for myself was the application because I, I first learned Taiji as a martial art and so I would be thinking okay that person's pushing and I'm neutralizing and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna press them and they're going to split me and I'm going to split them and I'm going to push them and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. 
And before I knew it, again, just like the the Vicks Vapor Rub, uh, you know, my mind is on something else. Like, you know, I need to change the oil in my car. Um, the, the the mind is so amazing because it is a part of it doing the sequence. There's a part of it uh, acknowledging the Vicks Vapor Rub. There's a part of it doing application, beating up zombies, um, and then there's a part, you know, on some of the most trivial things. <laughs> it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the highest levels, one of the major ideas um, for a meditation technique uh, is called swimming in air. And that is, that's actually a, it kind of combines a lot of ideas as far as physical meditation, mental meditation, spiritual meditation. So the idea is that whatever's going forward is literally feeling the pressure of the air as if you were swimming or working through the air. Um, like you're swimming in water, but it's air. If you slow down, if you relax, if your nerves are all uh, very sensitive and alert, you'll start to feel uh, air pressure in your hands. Gradually, you'll feel it in your arms. Gradually, you'll feel it in your heart when you go forward and your back when you go backward. Uh, you lift your leg for the kicks. It's a, it's a really wonderful meditation technique. Um, you're not even thinking about the sequence or breath or anything. You are just um, swimming in air, getting all that that sensation. Um, for me, uh, my other teacher, Master Grandmaster Wylan Choi, you know, he always said, focus on one thing. He said, you want to have just one thing in your mind while you're doing the form, uh, whatever your practice is. He said, just have one thing, and you want to have that one thing do as many uh, jobs and benefits as you can. So the one thing I want to focus on, I want to make sure that that's helping me with my alignment and balance. I want to make sure that my one mental technique or my one meditation is helping me relax my muscles. I want to make sure that whatever this one thing that I'm working on doesn't interfere with my breathing, that it doesn't bother my breathing, it helps me with my breathing. And uh, I want to make sure that um, my meditation technique, my mental technique keeps my mind here and now in my solo form. And then, uh, you know, I also want to make sure that my technique makes uh, all my, um, my, my whole body work as one unit. And so I've tried a bunch of different ones. And, 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 so, and there are some that uh, they are out of the Taiji classics. There are some that are from your practice. Um, and it's usually that one thing that you really concentrate on that makes everything correct. It makes everything become right. So for me, it is being smooth. The concept of reeling silk from a cocoon or, or moving like flowing water, you know, Taiji's movements are like a, the, the current of a great river. Having your movements be as smooth as you can. You have to be in balance and correct alignment to be smooth. Otherwise, you fall or, or whatever. You have to be relaxed. If some muscles are tighter or are on a higher number than other muscles, you'll jerk into the movement. You'll make angular, jerky movements instead of smooth movements. Uh, if you're smooth, what will happen is your breath will calm down. And when the movements are smooth and the breath is calmed down, your mind will calm down. And then also to be smooth, you want to smoothly move your whole body at the parts of the postures where everything's going. Smoothly transition, the, transition them all forward or backward, left, right, up and, and down. Um, you know, one, one idea is that uh, when, you're, when you're moving smoothly, you can change what you're doing, but to keep smooth, you have to be gradual. So if the postures are climbing, the postures that are up, like the kicks and high pad on horse, you can go up in your posture. You just want to go up gradually because it's a smooth change. Um, the postures that go down and deep, such as uh, needle at sea bottom or squatting single whip, you can go down, but go gradually and, and you keep that smoothness. And within that smoothness, you can make lots of adjustments. You can do some postures at a, a, a faster tempo or a slower tempo than tempo than other 
postures. The idea, though, is if you quickly change, um, you lose the smoothness, you make jerks, and, 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 and you can affect uh, your breathing and your mind. But if you gradually bring the tempo up or gradually bring the tempo down, um, for instance, in the long form, when you get to the third section, there's many repeats of ward off, roll back, press, push, and single whip. And usually what happens is, you know, it's like I've done them already and people tend to, to speed up on those. Um, so what I like to do is to gradually slow those down when I get to the third section and that actually keeps me an even tempo. So if you think about um, smooth, like in the old days a record player, as long as the record is going smoothly, or a cassette tape, as long as it's going smoothly, the, the song or the sound will be, uh, will be consistent. You, you don't want your record player to speed up or slow down, you don't want anybody to hit it, uh, you definitely don't want any jerks, hey no jerks touching my record player. Um, you can apply that to your solo form. It will make things really clear really it'll make a lot of the principles, a lot of the the, um, the encouragements from the Taiji classics uh, like um, you know stand like a balanced scale you know it's once you get that scale balanced when you're moving smoothly you can keep it balanced or take steps like a cat walking once you've got everything smoothly your steps will become slow and soft and sensitive and empty and you can you can feel uh, what's going on in pushing hands when you're smooth Smooth makes speed. Jerks and angles are what slow you down. Smoothly change what you're doing. When you're practicing to be smooth, you can change and adapt. You can do all kinds of things. Um, it will definitely um, come into your pushing hands practice. Smooth uh, with your weapons, with your sword, with everything. Um, being smooth. Um, it can apply to so many parts of your, your life. Um, so for me, when, I, when I'm working on my solo form, what I'm working on my mind is just that constant thread, that really uh, uh, light focus on making everything internal, external, body, mind, spirit as smooth as I can. Um, I hope that helps. Um, please leave, leave some feedback, leave some uh, comment. Um, if you want to talk about this personally, send me a message. I'd love to hear about, you know, what you're working on on the inside of your solo form. Uh, until then, um, you know, uh, get out there, practice. You see the, if the weather's beautiful, if it's nice outside, get outside, do your practice, and uh, be a smooth operator. <laughs>